The Lord answers, look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed. For I am going to do something in your days that would you... Sorry, they jump around the page. That you would not believe, even if you were told. And I'm just going to leave it there. We won't push it any further. Because actually, when you're searching for God, when, you find it, when you're finding God, there comes a point where actually you get to that place where you realise actually the things which you do, you say, I think, how, how do they happen? You know it's not you. And even if you go through the times and the strength, I, like Tony said, Tony said, I got that, I got the award for outstanding. I have no idea how I got that, seriously. <laughs> I would just sit there blown, blown, blown away. College was, Whittle College was absolute, was great, fantastic, however, it almost killed me. The people who know me best know that it almost killed me. Why? Because, as you know, I'm dyslexic and I write about 50 to 100 words an hour maximum. And throughout the period of, t- period of time, so you, c- you can do the math, so if a paper's 3,500 words long, and that's without re-editing it and that's without researching it. So though you have two weeks, there's, been, there's many a night where, and many a week where I didn't sleep. There'll be a period, there's a, I think there's a period of a week and a half where I didn't sleep because I was constantly library up, work, food, go back. And during this, people will come and see you, say, James, what do you think about this? And even though you'd say, plat, you, you'll plan and say, look, I can't talk now, I'll do it later, I'll do it later, come and phone me, or I'm going to, I'm going to Morrison to get some food, come with me and we'll, we'll have a chat. People come in the library at 2, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning because morning, they knew I'd be alone and go, James, what do you think about this? And, you, and you're there and you're falling, asleep, you're falling asleep, you've got bananas on the side to try and keep you awake and it's kind of slow energy, although you weren't supposed to take food in there. And yeah. It's true. And you think, because you, it's just like, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? It's like, why are you up? <laughs> I know why I'm up and I'm suffering for it, but why are you up? And... It just blows me, blows me like a terrifying story. At the end of that, it got into a prayer meeting and, um, for, the end of, for, for our class at the end of the year, and we're all in a circle, and I'm standing towards the back, and I fell asleep standing up. And <laughs> it was great, but I was, I was there, and I got halfway to kind of towards the ground, got to about there, then I woke up, and I was like, oh, amen. <laughs> so <laughs> and it cracked everyone else up around me, but a lot of people were just like, what is going on? However, what this card brings me to is Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 5, 6, and 7. We haven't got very much time, and this is the Beatitudes. And the reason why I just want to skim over this, because you can spend weeks, days, years on this, is because actually this is kind of like a representation of how we disciple, how we live our lives, and it flows through everything which we do. And you can almost and you can track your journey from start to finish. So let me start. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger f- and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, so they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And blessed are those who are blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And what I want to say is that. You start off at a period of time where actually you're poor in spirit. You're poor in every single you're poor in every single way. And it, I've said it once to a poor person, and I thought I won't do anything. And it absolutely just that one blessed are the poor in spirit for, for yours again. And they were just like their eyes lit up and I was just like 
Try sending it to someone who's poor in spirit, who's down. It changes everything. When you realise actually you need God, you start to mourn, mourn, mourn. And this goes on to the next bit. You start to mourn. But it's a godly mourn. You realise you're not the centre of the universe. Like, I, I, must, I think we all sometimes admit that we think we are. We think we all have the answers. We look to everyone else for the answers. We try and fill the holes with whether buying DVDs, music, or I don't know. You feel, you feel everyone fills their holes in different, different ways to try and fill themselves. But when you get that godly morning and you realise that God's there, you start to be comforted. From then on, from that experience, you realise that actually because of this comfort and because you start to encounter God, actually, you realise your, your identity. You realise where your strength comes from. You realise where your identity, your dignity, your purpose, your call, your value. And that's when you become meek. Because it's no, it's not about you. Then through that, through that experience of actually you're searching for God, you start to live a righteous life. You start to follow God and walk in his footsteps and it gradually, build, and it gradually builds up then, so from that point because of, of that journey you see what God has done for you you start doing it to others so you show mercy then from that point, from then from that point because you see mercy you start to become pure in heart but because you're doing these steps you then you look around you you see the trouble around you and then you become the peacemaker However, and so, and so, this isn't for your purpose. Your call and these attitudes are a way of life, but isn't for your purpose. Why? Because it, it, if chapter 5 goes on to the next thing, why? Because you'd be so salt and light. I've called you to help other people. Because what of, because of the things which God has done for you, you need to go and do, to, do for other people. You need to show them. And, that's what, and, it, go, and it goes through, and people go... And it's a bit like, you can say a bit like the Jews. The Jews were like, well, aren't you here to abolish the law? Or as the Jewish people say, the Torah. Well, actually, Jesus is not there. He is the law. He's come to fulfill it. It's, the Torah, for some people, is just a set of rules. You can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this. However, it's why life. It's how a Christian acts, behaves. When you have when you're having a having a having a bad day, it's how you define your actions. It's the it's the when you've got almost like a picture of a river and you've got all those cross you've got a, you've got all of cross currents and people say, Oh, you should do this, you should do this, you should do that, you should do that. But actually Jesus and the way of living in Christian life is a constant flow, it goes in one direction. And if you're flying in that flow, it doesn't matter what cross currents come. You're going to live it. It's only when you start turning things into tradition and you start worshipping the tradition of what you do instead of worshipping who you're actually supposed to worship, then things become a problem.